part of the reason people drink alcohol is to get rid of their responsibility. I mean, that's, you know, you hear people drink because they have problems. It's like, yeah, yeah, no. Some people drink because they're anxious, and alcoholics drink because they're in withdrawal. But young people drink because they're sick and tired of being responsible, because it's annoying. It's like, so I'll drink enough, I won't care about the medium to long-term consequences, because alcohol, that's exactly what alcohol does. It doesn't make you ignorant of the medium to long-term consequences, but it makes you not care about them. And partly it's because it dampens anxiety. So it dampens anxiety, leaves your positive emotion circuits intact, so then you can go out there and do stupid, fun things. And that's like, that's a party, really. Let's fun things. That's a party. But the medium to learn long-term consequences are... It's risky. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but it's risky. The, the real kick only occurs when you're on the ascending limb of the blood alcohol curve. So, you know, first of all, your blood alcohol goes up and then it goes down. And generally when it goes down, it's not pleasant. That's when you start to feel hungover. And hangover is actually alcohol withdrawal, by the way. So it's like heroin withdrawal, except it's alcohol withdrawal. And it's generally not pleasant for people, so they usually sleep through it, or it puts them to sleep. But if you're one of these people who get a real kick on the ascending limb of the blood alcohol curve, then you can just keep pounding back the alcohol, and it'll keep hitting you, and keep you in that position where you're you know, on the, on the ascending part of the blood alcohol curve. And you can probably tell if you're one of these people if you can't stop once you get started. You know, so if it's like you have four drinks quick and it's like, man, you're gone until the alcohol runs out or till it's four in the morning or till you've spent all your money or you've been at the last bar in town or that you're sitting on your friend's bed after everybody's gone home from the party and you're still drinking, you might suspect that you're one of those people. And if you are one of those people, well then, you should watch the hell out because um, alcohol is a vicious drug and it, it gets people in its grasp hard and it's hard for them to escape once they do. People also drink to quell anxiety. The problem with the hedonic route is that, so the pursuit of pure happiness, let's say, is that what makes you happy in the next minute might not be something that will make you happy in the next hour. Well, you know that. There's this comic, what's his name? They called him King of the One-Liners. He talked about drinking wine. He said, don't you know that's gonna cause a hangover? He said, yeah, at the end, but the beginning and middle are excellent. And so that's really the problem with hedonism, right? Is that to pursue something that makes you happy in the immediate present risks sacrificing your, well, many things, but at least let's say your hedonism in the medium to long term. And of course, that is one of the major problems with drug use. And alcohol is a really good example of that because whatever hedonic kick you might get from it that moment at night, you're going to pay for almost completely or maybe even more so because the next day you're much more jittery and anxious. And that's a, that's a direct consequence of withdrawing from the drug. So when, you're in, when you have a hangover, you're in alcohol withdrawal. So that's how fast you, you get, roughly speaking, addicted to it. And so if you take another drink when you're hungover, it'll cure it. But it's not a very useful cure because all you do is push the inevitable hangover one more step into the future. And so part of the problem with the hedonic answer is happy when exactly and over what period of time. And also who's happy because maybe something makes you happy but makes your family miserable. Now you could say, well, I don't care, but you do care if you have to live with your family because they're going to take it out on you. So, so the, the impulsive hedonism, which is also fostered, say, by a positive emotion, it, it tends to put people into a state of the pursuit of short-term hedonism. It's not a good long-term or medium to long-term solution. I actually think that's why people evolved conscientiousness, right? Because conscientiousness is not happy. Conscientious people aren't conscientious because it makes them happy. We're starting to think that they're conscientious because they actually feel terrible if they're just sitting around doing nothing. And so it's a way of staving off stress, the stress that's related to enforced leisure, something like that. You know, you, if you know industrious people, some of, you'll have, some of you are industrious, some of you will have industrious parents, they just can't sit around and do nothing. They have to be working. They don't feel good unless they're working. So one thing about conscientiousness is that it, it involves continual sacrifice, right? You're doing difficult things in the present, hypothetically, to make the future better. 
But that's not driven by hedonism by any stretch of the imagination. And conscientiousness is actually a pretty good predictor of long-term life success in stable societies. Because there's also no point in being conscientious and saving things up and storing things if a bunch of thugs are going to just come in randomly and, and take it all away. So conscientiousness actually only works intelligently in societies that have some medium to long-term stability. You know, because you can get wiped out by hyperinflation too, because hyperinflation kills off the conscientious people. The people who accrue debts are thrilled when hyperinflation kicks in because it wipes out their debts. But, of course, those debts are the things they owe to people who were conscientious enough to save. Because positive emotion is associated with movement forward. Like, if you're where you want to be and things are going well, then your behavior should be activated so that you go and get things. Now, one of the negative consequences of that is that if you're really in a good mood, really happy, you're going to be impulsive and make mistakes. You know, because you hear these dough-headed, that's a very minor word, people who are always pushing happiness as the, as the key measure for, for successful existence. It's so ill-informed that it's embarrassing that that even happens. Positive emotion makes people impulsive. Maniacs, for example, which is really, if you, that's mania, right? Bipolar disorder. If you're manic, you're one happy person. Way too happy. Everything is great. Nothing but wonderful things that are beyond your imagination are going to happen to you. And they're going to happen fast. And so you're down to the mall to buy everything you can possibly get your hands on because you have a hundred uses for everything. And then a week later, you know, you crash into your depressive episode and you realize that you're $150,000 in debt and you've alienated everyone that you know. It's like that's untrammeled positive emotion. So how about no? You, the a pure index of positive emotion is no way of determining whether or not a system is working properly, even your own system. You need a balance between positive and negative emotions. Plus, positive emotions are absolutely exhausting. Because if you're in a manic episode, it's like, it's time to get everything good right now. Fine, but you won't sleep for a week, and then you die. Because you just burned yourself to a crisp. And so to be overwhelmingly enthusiastic about everything sounds like a real blast. And I've seen full-blown manics, and they're having plenty of fun, but it is not a pleasant thing to behold. They're just all over the place. And, you know, yeah, it's really not good. It's really not good. You need a balance between these two systems, because the whole world isn't explored territory bursting with nothing but promise. That's not the world. The world is that, in a bounded space, a little bit, with an absolute horror show going out ar around the periphery. And both of your, both systems need to be active in order to keep you balanced.